Okay, um, I am Planewalker, and we are about to get now into the Wave Guild intro to Subtractive Synthesis video tutorial. So we'll start out here with our presentation. Um, subtractive Synthesis. It is essentially a method of generating sound from nothing and um, that's why it's called synthesis and it's not recording um, you're creating sounds from scratch using uh, an analog subtractive synthesizer there's other types of synthesizers uh, but we're going to focus on the subtractive kind today so example instruments that you'll find sort of available these days most of them are software but you've got your Lin plug albino which is very popular native instruments massive which is also quite a popular uh, plug-in for doing this sort of thing. Also the Pro 53, Propeller Head Reason Subtractor, Ableton Operator, which is partially FM, but you also have stuff like the Logic ES1 and ES2, but um, that's actually what we're going to get into today, but those are program specific. Um, so anyways, that's what your software is. Your analog hardware example instruments, uh, Moog has a whole range of subtractive instruments. Um, there's the Dave Smith Evolver, the Prophet 5, the Alesis Andromeda. Um, these are all analog hardware. In other words, they use uh, electrical circuitry, but they don't have a digital sound generation engine. It's um, all completely on the atomic scale, and there's no digital. So it's much higher resolution. A lot of people think that the pure analog hardware sounds smoother. And then you've got your digital hardware, which is usually called virtual analog, which is a sort of digital emulation of real analog hardware. And uh, good examples of those would be your Access Virus, your Nord Lead, the Waldorf Q, and then the Alesis Ion and Micron, which are more budget versions of those things. So this is the sort of instrument you're going to need in order to uh, take advantage of this tutorial. So. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at our synth signal flow. We have a bunch of different components here uh, that you are going to use for creating your sound. And you need to know what each of these things does if you're going to properly utilize the instrument. So everything starts out with your oscillators. The oscillators generate a raw sound um, waveform. And you can think of it in a similar way to if you are going to uh, make a sculpture, for example, you're going to start out with a block of something, like a block of stone or a block of wood or um, something like that, right? So your oscillators provide the raw sound. It's a very basic kind of sound. Um, it's not going to sound all that interesting or great in and of itself, but um, once you start doing other things to it, then you get a more uh, sort of complete uh, full sound. So you're not only limited to one oscillator, you can use more than one, usually you're going to be using at least two and sometimes three or four depending on the synthesizer. Uh, most synthesizers give you at least two, some only one, and then some have dedicated oscillators for generating a noise waveform or a sub uh, harmonic waveform. So you will be using these as your raw sound. All of these signals get mixed together in some kind of mixer and that will create a kind of composite waveform that you will then run through a filter that's going to take out some of the frequencies in that waveform. So the filter is kind of like your chisel for your block of stone. It, it takes things away and thus is why it's called subtractive synthesis because you're starting out with a basic sound and you're subtracting harmonics from that sound. And I'll talk about harmonics more in a minute. Uh, the next thing that you're moving toward is your amp envelope all the way there on the right and that determines the dynamics of the sound. So in other words how fast the attack is. Um, we'll get more into the envelope but you know, some sounds are very short and are percussive, you know, like a bop kind of sound. And then some sounds are more sustained, like maybe a bowed string sound might kind of come on like, uh, kind of like that. 
So you've got, after that, you're going to run into your effects and then eventually do your output. Um, now, everything else that you're going to do in subtractive synthesis, aside from those basic steps that go from oscillator to mixer to filter to amp envelope to the effects and then the output, all of those have to do with something called modulation. And uh, modulation is essentially controlling one parameter over time. Um, the, the most common modulation that's done is the filter envelope, which you can see there below the filter, and it essentially changes the dynamics of the filter. So it will, it will determine over time which waveforms are subtracted and then added back in uh, as the filter opens and closes. So we'll talk more about all these components later. Um, you'll notice down here in the lower left corner you've got a couple other things. Your mod envelope, which would be some kind of modulation, and that, that will modulate a parameter. And I know that probably sounds like rocket science right now, but it's really quite simple. There's a bunch of different parameters in the synth, and they get modulated by different sources. And the two most common sources are an envelope or an LFO. And um, the LFO um, is very similar to an envelope, except it's cyclical, cyclical. So let's move on quickly and talk about our oscillator overtone series. So um, kind of an important thing to understand before you start putting sounds...